clean up this part right here. It's the brake cover. Also clean up some other parts. So this is the mount for the handlebars. Not only do I clean this up, I make a small modification to it. There's a rubber bushing that goes in here and that rubber bushing can get really wiggly over time. So I, I modify that so the bike has a more rigid and strong feel. Uh, modifications you're gonna do to the frame. So you can shave a lot of the brackets off of it. This was for the old uh, air box. That can come off. You can cut the locks off if you don't want them. Uh, I always remove the fender as I did on the, the blue bike. You can cut some other brackets off that you're no longer gonna need, but we'll go into all those details. Specific modifications to make the bike actually work. So you're gonna modify the rear swing arm. The old style rear wheel had an axle that slid in. Well, ours doesn't. So you have to actually cut the back off here and slide the rear wheel in. The rear, rear wheel has a few issues. So this is 170 millimeters and the new rear wheel is 150 millimeters. Also the new rear wheel is 10 millimeters high where that needs to go in the dropouts. And these are 15 millimeters on this side and 12 millimeters on this side. So you're gonna to need to take up that space. Also, some of the C200s and C100 bikes have thinner dropouts. So the CT90s have 12 millimeters and those other bikes have skinnier ones. So if you don't reinforce these when you're taking up this space, it can break, as you can see in this photo. I had to go through and actually add some material and really strengthen this bike to make this all work out. But we now have a much better solution. It's one piece. It takes up the space, vertical and horizontal, and it also adds the brake bracket in here so you can mount the caliper right up to it. So a cool solution. You'll need to add a battery box. I add my battery box right here. I feel like it makes the bike ride the best because this is where the weight of the motor was. Aesthetically, I feel like it looks the most natural again because this is where the motor was. Uh, there's other options out there that I've seen where people mount it where the battery was, I'm sorry, where the gas tank was, or back on the back rack, but it's gonna be a wheelie king if you do this. So modifying the frame, we need to make some cuts to the frame. You do not wanna mess with the VIN, so be very careful. And I've got two options. There's a bolt-up option, and there's a weld-on option. So we're gonna go over that. Uh, other things you'll need to do to prep the frame. So remove all of the parts, every single part from this frame. You can go through at that point and fill some of these holes by welding them and clean up the frame in any way you want. Then I go through and I weld anything I wanna weld to it and then sandblast the whole frame. So sandblasting, that's a really messy process. I do have a sandblast rig that we're gonna talk about, but you can take your bike somewhere and have it sandblasted. Following the sandblasting, I do some Bondo and fill the whole frame, and then you're gonna do your paint. So that's really an overview of you know, what the project's gonna take. Next, we're gonna talk about donor bikes. So what donor bikes you can use, and then we're gonna do some test riding of my bikes. So until next time, have a good day.